Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Northwest Baseball Report podcast. I'm your host, Josh. I'm excited for today. I actually get to have on a guest from my alma mater, Corbin University. But guys, I want to jump into this. This is actually the first podcast that I've done in a couple months that I've actually had a guest on. And it's the first full podcast I'm doing for the Northwest Baseball Report, which is one of the new shows I'm doing on the Nine Inning Know It All uh, podcast platform. A lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. It's it's great to represent the Northwest uh, because really here in the Northwest, there's kind of a sense of pride about being a baseball player, being a fan, you know, it, whether it's from, you know, you're up north in the Bellingham area, down in Medford or across to Idaho, you know, the, it's a whole sense of pride for the whole region. And that's why one of the things I'm excited about is the fact that I get to partner with Rep the Pacific Northwest, which is a hat company that has one of the coolest hat designs I've ever seen, especially for a regional uh, focused hat. It actually has Washington, Oregon, and Idaho stitched together with baseball seams. I have one of the hats, going to be ordering more. Uh, I love it. They're, they're, it's just, it's awesome. I'm glad they're a sponsor for the uh, Northwest Baseball Report podcast and website. It just, it's a perfect fit. It really is. But guys, once again, I'm excited that I get to be on here and talk some baseball, you know, because first of all, baseball is being played. That is awesome. I'm seeing all the all the articles and scores and I'm loving it. And I'm just excited the fact that this is going on this year. We missed a lot so much in, in the last 10, 11 months of, of not having baseball really around at the local level. So with that, guys, let's just jump right into our topic. Once again, it's Corbin University. I have Ethan Bragg. He's an assistant coach for Corbin. Ethan, how are you doing today? Doing well. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, you know, right off the bat, I mean, this has been, whether your team is winning or losing, being back on the field has got to feel pretty good for coaches and for players right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a huge blessing that, uh, you know, several of us probably took for granted over the last several years of our lives, but then kind of get back into it in the last 10 months off and being able to just get those connections back with our players and help them grow in their personal lives and on the field and finally have it culminate with getting back on the field is a big blessing for us all. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for you guys down there in Salem, what was it like for the guys when they got to come back together, you know, and not only for school, but also for being, you know, just a chance to interact and have those relationships being built again. Because obviously when you're gone for 10 months, it's rough because that's for a lot of guys, that's their closest friendships are on the baseball field. So what was it like for the guys when they finally got back on the field, back in school and getting, getting things going? Yeah, I think our guys attacked the challenge head on. Uh, obviously with last year getting cut short, it was some relationships that were getting culminated and some team culture things that we had worked hard on in the fall to have that cut short was definitely detrimental to their growth. But I think they came in with, uh, you know, spirits high this fall and powered through some of the COVID protocols and the online classes to kind of get back to where we are now. So um, it really speaks to the resiliency of our group. I think our upperclassmen have done a really nice job of, you know, teaching the younger guys of how we want things done and being to culminate those foundational relationships that uh, help the program continue to grow year after year. Yeah, absolutely. And then for you guys, starting off the season, you kind of struggled early on, uh, couldn't really get things going. But recently, you guys have kind of kind of found a little bit of a groove. Uh, you're six and six in conference. For you guys as a coaching staff, how are you seeing things going right now? And what things are you excited about? Which things do you think you guys have to work on a little bit more as the season goes along? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there was a, a lot of unanswered things for probably every program going into the first couple of weeks of the season, just not knowing how the team was going to come together on things, not knowing the roles players were set for. And we make it a point to schedule uh, as good a non-conference slate as we can. So going down to Vanguard University and William Jessup University on back-to-back -back weekends is always two pretty big road showdowns for us to start the year. And uh, you know, kind of regardless of how the score works out in those games, we we know that in the long run it's going to make us better playing competitive top 25 teams is always more beneficial for our guys. It helps our pitchers find a way to get big outs and helps our hitters get some at-bats against really quality pitching. So uh, moving forward and into the Cascade Collegiate Conference play, I think it's important for us to just keep working off that. Um, as of late, we've, you know, done a lot better job on the mound of attacking the strike zone early and often, and our hitters have – kind of settled into the approach that works for them. I think in today's day and age of baseball, everybody wants to be the 30 home run guy and drive the ball, which is perfectly fine. But we've settled into our roles offensively a little bit. And I'm looking forward to us uh, keeping that going when we get back on the field next weekend. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then for you guys in the Cascade Collegiate Conference, you know, you you know you're going to be facing LC State each year, who um, has a very rich history. You know, what is it like for you to enter the season knowing, hey, you know, like you said, you're going to play some tough competition in the you know kind of the early on the season, guys who aren't a part of the conference, but you know that helps you get ready for a team like LC State that you know is going to be bringing it every time they're on the field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, their reputation precedes them for sure. And Coach Taylor's doing a nice job continuing that legacy over there. But I think we we set that as the standard in the conference and we go in and attack every baseball game against the game. I think the opponent is kind of the afterthought at some times. Um, baseball is a game where you got to show up and play your best every single day or you can win or lose no matter what. So I think we've really tried to preach that to our players. And yeah, we've got some great games against the Vanguards and against the LC States. But if we can show up to the yard every day and execute the plan that we put forward, we're going to give ourselves a chance to go get wins against anybody that runs out there against us. And then for Corbin, you guys actually get to play your home games at the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes home stadium, which is a very nice stadium, especially for college level. What's it like to go there and, and know that you're playing on a field that is pretty nice? Because, you know, even though Corbin does have a, a home field, it tends to get a little wet during the springtime. So what's it like to have that, that nice, very well-kept stadium to be able to play at? Yeah, absolutely. It obviously takes a decent amount off our plate as a coaching staff to know that we've got that facility there with the nice tarp and the locker room and the cages that we can use to fight the weather here. So we're definitely blessed with that. Uh, that partnership's worked out very well for us in the past. And I think it you know, serves the opponents that come in well, too. We get to come into a nice field, nice facilities, nice amenities, and just play the game of baseball. So from a coaching staff standpoint, it takes a ton off our plate, which we're really appreciative of. And our administration's done a nice job of continuing that relationship with Volcano Stadium. And we're looking forward to that in the future. But uh, just to be able to have the guys show up there and get that atmosphere and get that, as you mentioned, nice playing surface and ability to just go out and worry about playing the game and nothing else is a huge blessing for us. And then, you know, going into the year, once again, you, you kind of were, uh, for most teams, they really didn't know what to expect from all the players. You know, you never know how a guy's offseason will affect him, especially an extended offseason. And then, of course, you got incoming freshmen. Who have kind of been the the top performers for you guys early on, guys who you've kind of really been able to lean on, whether it be on the mound or, or at the plate? Yeah, I think, uh, again, we kind of had a lot of unanswered questions there. We returned a decent amount of our players, and I think our guys have each attacked their roles head on, which is something that, uh, as a coach, you can never be more proud of guys that settle into their roles no matter what it is and find a way to win for the, the Corbin team instead of the team that they're rooting for individually. So I think it's very important that we can, you know, come together as a team. Uh, Zach Simon's done a really nice job for us on the mound this year, and we expected that, and he put in a lot of work this offseason. And, uh, you know, offensively, I don't know that we've had that one standout guy. We've had guys that show up each and every weekend, some new guys and some returners that have done a really nice job for us moving forward, and we're excited about their continued growth on stringing together quality at-bats and passing the baton to the guy behind them. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, I've kind of realized, you know, covering a lot of the, the JUCO level is that, you know, you don't always know who's going to come in and, and play big, but, you know, someone always steps up and it's always nice to see uh, guys do that. And it almost, in a way, is kind of a, a leadership thing as well. Guys will take on that leadership role. And have you noticed that some of the guys who maybe, you know, really realized how much they lost having their season canceled have really kind of stepped up leadership wise to make sure guys are, you know, trying their hardest, but also enjoying the game at the same time? Yeah, if there's one thing that to me has stood out after the the big time off that we've had, it was just the appreciation that guys have of being back on the baseball field. I think it kind of puts things in perspective of what the real world holds for these guys in some capacity after they're done playing. And uh, yeah, I, I, I can't name one guy in specifically, but I think there's so many of our guys that have just come back with that fresh mindset and that fresh attitude that baseball and the collegiate experience in general is a huge privilege for them and to be able to take that into your everyday life and attack that head on is always something that's special. We talk a lot in our program about the different places we could be if we weren't coaching or we weren't playing that day. And, uh, you know, no matter how good or things, and no matter how good or bad things are going on the field, it's important for us to, you know, realize how blessed we are to be on the field each and every day and uh, continue to work for that. And then, you know, obviously once again, we had that downtime for you as a coach, I mean, you coach outfielders and, and hitters, is there some things that you learned over the past 10 months you've been able to kind of implement this year and, and kind of use the learn from other coaches who were in the same situation you were in? 
Yeah, I think the the coaching connection piece was huge for me this summer, um, and I think other people can uh, talk about that as well. With with a ten month layoff, is something we don't get that often, so we had to learn to kind of recruit in some new ways, and it gave me an opportunity just to kind of learn and expand myself as a coach. I mean, talking with coaches that I've known as mentors through my playing days or coaches that I've culminated relationships with uh, now that I've started coaching is really important too. And I think we can all continue to learn from each other there. There's so much information and technology out there that, uh, you know, it's kind of a disservice to our players if we're not trying to grow and learn every day. So I think us as a staff, we took that to heart and did as best we could to find ways to learn things and find new ways to recruit and new ways to see players through that layoff as well. And then, you know, obviously you guys are still early on in the season. So looking towards the rest of the season, what are some things that you hope to see uh, accomplished by the team or, or just some things you hope to see them do performance-wise as you guys move forward through the rest of the season? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, having the Cascade Collegiate Conference have an actual conference tournament this year is a big pretty easy goal for us in years past we've had to do a little joint conference tournament with the Cal Pack down in California and Arizona just to make things work for our automatic bid here in the conference so getting Eastern Oregon back in the fold and then adding UBC back to it next year is important that we can have our own conference tournament so I think that's goal number one for our guys um, is to you know find a way to finish in the top three here in the regular season and make that conference tournament and then you know, kind of step-by-step -step goals after that. I think we've got the group to go compete for a conference championship and move on to a regional. And then, uh, as you know, anytime you get into postseason baseball, it's kind of all hands on deck and just get out and play as hard as you can and keep lasting day after day. Absolutely. And then, you know, you mentioned Eastern Oregon and Bushnell. What's it like to have a new, a new pro, or they're essentially new programs, although they've had you know teams in the past what's it like having new programs join into the conference I mean it's got to be somewhat exciting to see the conference grow a little bit yeah absolutely I think the Cascade Collegiate Conference has done a great job with trying to bring baseball more and more to the northwest obviously with as many teams as there are in the NWAC um, and teams like that and obviously with Oregon Idaho and Washington having you know pretty solid high school baseball programs at the club level and the high school level, it's important that we keep growing the collegiate baseball around here. And I think the Cascade Conference has embraced that, as you mentioned, with Bushnell and Eastern Oregon, and hopefully continued growth from there. Um, it, it's a great way for our players in the Northwest to represent themselves and represent the brand of baseball that we play up here. And, you know, on roster right now, we've got kids from eight different states, and I think there's a genuine desire for players to come play in the Pacific Northwest. It's a great place to call home, especially for four years for players that are looking for something different or players that have been here their whole lives. So I think as long as we're growing baseball in the Northwest, we're doing something right as a conference. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things that, you know, my time covering baseball here in the Northwest, it's just, I don't think people realize just how good the baseball is up here. And, and to go on top of that, how beautiful this area is to play baseball. There's so many amazing places to to catch a game and watch it. And so the last question I have for you is actually kind of related to that. In your career playing and coaching, what has been your favorite place to to play a game or be at a game at in, in the Northwest? Wow, yeah, that's that's a great question. Uh, you know, I think I think the easy answer is LC State. Uh, they put together a great, uh, you know, tournament, whether it's a tournament there or just a four-game series. The, the fan base there is something kind of unique to the Northwest. There's just so many people that live for baseball in that town and the rich history from Ed Sheff on forward. Just to be able to play in that environment is something that's pretty unique. Um, and honestly, the University of British Columbia has poured a ton of money into their facility. Uh, last year, former big league pitcher Jeff Francis had his number retired when we were up there and uh, you know, they debuted a nice turf field and that drive up to Vancouver, BC is always a pretty cool one for us to just travel through the, you know, right up to the coastline and then up through Seattle and into Vancouver is one of my favorite places to visit. So those would probably be the top two in conference for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, even beautiful areas, Corbin's whole um, campus is actually a pretty beautiful area. I, I love going to school there uh, myself. It's been a number of years, but uh, it, it's fun. It's a beautiful area. I love the Northwest. And I love Northwest baseball and and I love the fact that I'm seeing Corbin really improve. I mean, they've had some good years in the past when I've covered uh, baseball, but really it's fun to see the program continue to grow and continue to develop. And uh, honestly, I just wish you guys the best of luck down there. Yeah, thank you. We're absolutely blessed by by campus and the administrative support. And as you mentioned, I think, you know, Coach Legg's done a great job since taking over and and the, the rest of the coaching staff and I are just working to kind of continue to build that foundation and 
make us a perennial winner. So we're looking forward to it and appreciate your time. Absolutely, Ethan. Thank you so much for being on here and have a great day. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, Ethan Bragg, he's an assistant coach for Corbin University. I did actually get my bachelor's and my master's degree from Corbin. I actually worked there for two years, which is kind of funny because not any know-it-all. If you guys follow the last couple of years, you know, that's the site I started initially 10 years ago. I was actually working at Corbin um, just after I started that uh, started the site and I actually started covering Corbin. Corbin's really the first college I ever covered for my website um, doing photos. And it was a, a lot of fun. I learned a lot in terms of baseball coverage that I've now used today as I cover the NWAC and other schools in the Northwest. So that's a lot of fun. I do, I do enjoy seeing Corbin uh, improve and get better. I actually know a number of the players from the past who uh, I still sometimes will communicate with on Twitter, different things like that. And it's, it's a lot of fun to see that. So uh, I, I'm excited for that. But guys, with that, that was the first official Northwest Baseball Report podcast with a guest talking Northwest Baseball. And guys, I say it all the time when I talk about the NWAC, how much I love the NWAC, but I love baseball in the Northwest so much. It's just, it truly is beautiful. There are so many fields you can go to and have mountain ranges behind you or the ocean outside the outfield fence or it's just amazing so I, I love the northwest and it's just amazing guys if you ever get a chance to road trip up here if you're not from the northwest you got to do it there's a lot of great places to catch a game but guys with that i'm calling it a podcast thank you so much for listening until next time talk to you guys later